Hello, students of statics. In this video today, we're going to take a look at 3D Cartesian vectors. And so 3D Cartesian vectors are going to be focused on a three-dimensional coordinate system. Let's go ahead and draw a right-hand coordinate system here. We're going to pick Y going here across this direction. Let's pick X coming out here. And then if this is a right-hand coordinate system, X crossed into Y is Z. Your Z needs to be going upwards. And let's go ahead and draw a vector in this space. Let's have our vector drawn up this direction here. Now, it's really hard to see exactly what direction these vectors are going in um, unless you have what I like to call ghost boxes. And to play with one of these systems that's interactive, go ahead and take a look in your engineering statics textbook at the GeoGebra Interactive, and you can actually create vectors like this, throw on the ghost boxes, rotate them around, look at them in different ways. For this one, we'll go ahead and let's go ahead and say it's going to drop down to the xy plane right here. I could project that over the y axis here, back over to the x in this direction. And now I can add the other sides of this box. So this one would be horizontal. Uh, down here, intersecting with the x axis, back here to the z and over there uh, connecting the other side. So this kind of gives me a full cube and we can see how um, this vector sits in space. So it turns out that this vector A happens to have a positive X, positive Y, and positive Z components as it's drawn. And so we can actually write this vector. We can say that A as a vector is equal to Two different ways I can write this. One of them I could use bracket notation and say it's equal to components AX, comma, AY, comma, AZ. And the other way I could write it is that A vector is equal to AX in the I hat plus AY in the J hat plus A. Uh, Z in the K hat direction. So to add in those unit vectors, we have our I hat along the x axis we have our j hat along the y axis and then our k hat up there in the z direction and to additionally add in our components let's go ahead and put those put those in brown and so our components really gives me the sides of this cube right so i can draw a vector coming down here this would be my a sub x horizontally over to that corner of the cube a sub y and then vertically up here along the z axis a sub z okay so three different components two different ways of writing this same vector with either hard brackets or also um, with um, i hat j hat k hat those unit vectors now one more thing i'm going to add to this drawing are what are known as coordinate direction angles Now, these angles are also known as direction cosine angles. I'll try to stick with coordinate direction angles. I think it's a little bit better term, but direction cosine angles works as well. And these angles fundamentally are the angles between the positive axes. Okay, so defined as the angle between the positive x, y, and z axes, I'm going to put a plural in here, the angles between the positive x, y, and z axes um, to the vector. Okay, so as we draw these, these are not planar angles that are going to exist in like an xy plane, a yz plane, any of those planes. They're actually wrapping in three-dimensional space from this positive axis up here to that vector. So we're going to label this one as theta sub x, it's my direction cosine angle from the positive x axis up to that vector. And then theta sub y 
once again from positive y axis to the vector and then coming down theta sub z okay theta x theta y and theta z are the direction cosine angles um, or the coordinate direction angles now where they get their name direction cosine angles is from this equation we know that the cosine of theta x happens to be equal to the component of the x excuse me the component of that a vector in the x direction divided by the total magnitude um, of a now this is the absolute value so i'm going to write that as a magnitude in the top this top term could either be um, positive or negative Okay, so if it's a negative value, you'd have a negative value up on the top there, but the bottom, because the magnitude is always going to be positive. And similarly for the y and the z, we can say that the cosine of theta sub y is equal to a y magnitude divided by, excuse me, not magnitude, but a y value of that component divided by the magnitude or length of a. And then in a parallel form, the cosine of theta sub z is equal to a z divided by the magnitude of a vector. All right, so that gives you some equations for the um, coordinate direction angles. Now these angles are always going to be between zero degrees, and in general we call them theta sub n, and 180 degrees. And that's just because if they get more than 180 degrees away from the positive axes, then you measure from the other side. Okay, and any time that you have a angle theta sub n, which is uh, greater than 90, what that tells you is it tells you that your a sub n, your component in that direction of that direction cosine angle, is negative. Okay, so those are one and the same. If you have a negative component, you'll get a uh, coordinate direction angle greater than 90, but still less than 180. Uh, one more equation that we can write, and this is actually where we can come up with our unit vector components along A. Now realize there's, a, there's another unit vector we could draw, and I'm going to draw it, we'll go with red right on top here. So let's say that along A, I can write this vector A hat. Okay, so a hat, once again, is a unit vector along a. It's the pure direction of a. Okay, so it has a magnitude of 1. It has no units. It's the pure direction of a. And so I can write an equation for a hat is equal to, I'll go ahead and use bracket notation for this, the cosine of theta x, the cosine of theta y, and the cosine of theta sub z are your x, y, and z components of that unit vector in the a direction. And hopefully you can take a look at where this comes from, right? Fundamentally over here on the left-hand side, you know, here we have that the um, component divided by the total vector, right, is another way that we get unit vectors. And so if that's the same thing as a unit vector, we can then just substitute that our cosine of theta x, theta y, and theta z also give us those unit vectors. And because these are components of a unit vector, it also turns out we could apply the Pythagorean theorem. We could apply the Pythagorean theorem to three-dimensional vectors just like two-dimensional vectors. And that basically tells us that the square root of the sum of the squares so we can write that as the cosine squared of theta x plus the cosine squared of theta y plus the cosine squared of theta z have to equal 1. Right? They have to equal 1 because that is the length of that total vector. So the handy thing about this is it gives you an algebraic equation. Say that you only know theta x and theta y, you can then solve for theta z using this scalar equation, uh, basically to back solve for that third direction cosine angle. So I'll pull a note here, can solve for third theta sub n, given two others.
So that is how we use direction cosine angles, also known as coordinate direction angles, to come up with a unit vector along um, a certain line. And we're going to use this fundamentally if we're given um, even two of these three angles, right? So if you've got some already angles measured in this direction, we go ahead and use that. In the next video, we're going to talk about um, spherical coordinates and how you could use those as well.